Doha, Qatar, massive series by Daniel Stahl. We're gonna break it down, a little video analysis in this video. Here we go, check it out. Hey everybody, it's Coach Johnson, and in today's video, what we wanna do is mix it up a little bit, go through a little video analysis, and one of the biggest things and biggest uh, news pieces in the last week in track in throwing world it has been Daniel Stahl's massive series in Doha. He had a phenomenal series, 70-56 is his best on the day, three throws over 70 meters, and three throws 69 mid. Huge, huge performance, really awesome. So let's take a look here, and we'll break down his 70-56. So one of the things... Uh, um, when we look at it, if you look, we created a six pillars of the throws using stall as a technical model. And again, you're going to notice um, we teach a one, two, three start. I, I love the way he sets up the throw. He creates a ton of great tension. Having the opportunity to have met Coach V, Coach Vestin Hefsteinson, uh, whose coaches Stahl and Simone Peterson and a bunch of other really top-notch throwers, including obviously one of the greatest ever, Gerd Cantor, got some great insights last year into what, you know, kind of how they look and think about the throw. But I'll kind of maybe infuse some of that with what we're going to talk about. So just, but just looking at all the things that I think he does so well, one of the things you'll notice from one of our YouTube videos is we always talk about staying long and this guy is a big guy. He's almost 6'8". And so you're going to notice that he just maximizes every ounce of that. So you're going to notice that was that starting line, what we'd say in pillar one. This is how we move to pillar two. Pillar two, again, setting up maximum power. We're trying to get around the axis. And you'll notice that how the left side is really what's really important for that. A lot of athletes are going to come up and kind of rotate too high on the toe, or they're going to let this side collapse. And when that happens, the hips go this way. But you're going to notice one of the things that I think uh, makes Stahl such an exceptional thrower is how he really moves out and around. You see how the knee and everything is moving this way. And again, one of our YouTube videos, we talked about the holy grail of the throw, getting around pillar two into pillar three, which we call a lot of times people just refer to as getting left. If you're a left-handed thrower, we call it, you know, getting right. So Stahl obviously does a great job. You're going to notice that how the position of the left arm is going very long and around. So he's creating this path with the upper body and he's creating this path with the lower body. And that overall is creating this type of motion through his entire throw, which is extremely efficient. Clearly, the series indicates that. So as he comes around, again, notice that length he really maintains. He gets this great position of driving the knee down and into the throw. This is beginning that sprint phase of the throw. And you can see that because as he's driving here, the sprint leg is moving ahead. This is when you naturally, what we talk about is we like to have a, a lot of our throwers think of how they're pushing and loading this knee and that dropping point, that stopping point happens when you're moving correctly. Again, looking at stall, how we really pull, we call it pulling into the throw. He's pulling in and he has that linear component. So he's rotational, angular, and linear all super efficiently. Um, now you're going to, again, you're going to notice how level he is. And one of the things Coach V had talked about um, was your, how, how he keeps um, their, their focus is really maintaining a, a level shoulders and hips. And you can see that's very evident in Stahl's throw. And in order to do that, he's going to have to kind of pick up the right knee and look at how amazing the left side follows the right. His left foot is extremely quick off the back. And so as he comes around here, now a lot of people would say he's too open. And what I would argue is that looking at it from a technical standpoint, the left arm is open. A lot of throwers kind of have more of a, um, you're going to see a little bit more of the shoulder and the arm kind of more like this. And so they're looking like they're going to see the right side. Let's use a different tool. You look like you would see the right side kind of curling into that. And I would say that he does do that well because his shoulders are not open. His arm is open and long, but you can see how the lower body is really moving ahead. And you can see that here. So now you could see that the hips are facing here. He's He's got this great angle here. He's really stacked here. And this is where we go back. So in our system, we call this pillar three, four, and then there's that five and then so this is five and now he can begin six where he drives into the throw and again great block side stop that's what we refer to it as we we do refer to it as blocking we want to see this side come to a halt and we want to see 
this side accelerating around. Let me change that. So it's going to be this way. So again, that's where, you know, how do you throw like this? in a simple way you can simplify and we're always big about simplifying that's the whole key of the throwing chain reaction is we want to make everything the whole motion we chain positions and we train throwing motion that's our pillars and our pillar connection and i think one of the key things is staying long setting up looking how this this side moves ahead of of this <clears throat> right so you see the lower body really moving ahead of the upper body and that's how he maintains this great center of mass, great rotational movement, super stacked, right? You see that, how everything's on top, and that allows this knee to rotate, to continue rotating fast. If you look again, you see no slowing down. So we had a couple YouTube videos we put up a while back, staying long and staying continuous. And again, for a young thrower, if you can't stay long or continuous, chances are you're off balance and you're falling. And that has to do with that holy grail video that we created. So we were talking about how to move around. So I think these are the key things when you look at Stahl, he's the epitome of staying long. He gets around that left. He stays ultra continuous, and that's because everything is super efficient, and it's going to be really exciting to see where he goes. Amazing performance again in Doha. Congrats to him and Coach Hef Steinson. Uh, really exciting. As a fan of the sport, it's going to be really cool to see where this guy goes and what he does throughout his career. So anyway, hope you guys like that. That's how it is. That you just got to put in a zillion reps and be a super stud. But the more you learn, the faster you'll get better. Again, thanks so much for watching. If you like this analysis, uh, let us know. Put it in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up. And we will see you on the next video. Hey everybody, in today's YouTube video, we are going to discuss the holy grail. What is it? It's pillar two. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What do you mean it, coach? Not pillar one? Serious? No, pillar two. Pillar one sets up the killer pillar two. So what we've talked about is how we set up the throw properly. Pillar two. This is getting left is another term that a lot